a couple weeks ago, I was, I was chatting with, with Colin and, and others, and I, I realized that uh, you know, we were talking about, um, the, about open source sustainability in general as a, as a topic for the conference and a theme we wanted to touch on, given how, how, how hot button of an issue it's been over the last, uh, about the last year or so. Um, and as I was thinking about that, we realized um, it's been a decade, over a, over a decade since um, MySQL, MySQL was purchased by Sun, uh, just, just under a decade when, since Sun was purchased by Oracle. And I started to think, I was talking to Peter about the Percona sponsorship and about their, uh, their presence here and talking to uh, the MariaDB folks about all of their presentations. And I realized we actually have quite a few leaders from the MySQL uh, diaspora, as I was calling it here. And that this is an interesting one to me because it's a very vibrant community despite the fact that it all sort of branched in a weird family tree about a decade ago. And yet when I decide to write some code to query databases, it mostly just works across all of the different database distributions. And when I start to think about what databases are, you know, the default around a lot of what we use in Linux, again, uh, MySQL or a MySQL derivative or, or branch of some sort. And I thought, this is, uh, this is weird. I don't think I've seen any other open source communities that have done it in this way, and I'd love to get the experts in the room to talk about it. And so Colin uh, Charles uh, was kind enough to help organize this uh, and put it together. So we've got folks from, uh, from Procona, from Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Alibaba, and of course, uh, MariaDB. And so with that, I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Charles to start an interesting conversation about how we got here and where we go next. Thank you, Ilan. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Ilan, the scale team, for having us here. Um, many came from, uh, from afar, even on this panel, and uh, it's, Probably not a stretch to say that we, on, on this stage, there's probably a combined 100 years worth of database experience uh, from the people that are here. Um, some of you are still streaming in, thanks to uh, probably daylight savings time. You got one less hour worth of sleep. This used to be a problem with database replication possibly a long time ago, though I guess now we fix that all, since you know, we all run with UTC time, right? <laughs> all right. So um, Oracle, I uh, apologize that they could not be here uh, as stewards of MySQL, largely because uh, their executives don't work on weekends. <laughs> so um, without further ado, we, we start with uh, the first panelist, Peter Zaitsev, CEO and co-founder of Percona, formerly of MySQL AB, and author of this wonderful tome called High Performance MySQL 3rd Edition. To the right of me, we also have Yoshinori Matsunobu, uh, production engineer and MySQL tech lead at Facebook. He is the man responsible for leading MyRox development, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit more about what MyRox has done for Facebook. They've, they've migrated their user database, Messenger, and so forth. Uh, also, formerly from MySQL AB, also made a wonderful tool called MHA for high availability, still in use today. And it's his first time at scale, so give him a warm scale welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We also have uh, Sunil on my left. He's the principal group program manager at the Azure data team responsible for MySQL, MariaDB server, and Postgres. Uh, they recently also acquired Citus Data, uh, showing the commitment to the uh, Postgres community. And it is also his first time at scale, so give him a warm welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Further on, we have Jimmy Yang, team lead for PolarDB storage engine at Alibaba Cloud. Formerly also an InnoDB architect at Oracle, and it is also his first time at scale. Someone should convince him to tweet as well. <laughs> and all the way uh, to my left, we have Vicente Kiyobaru, software developer team lead at the MariaDB Foundation. And he got into hacking on MariaDB server via Google Summer of Code, and he has graduated to being the program um, administrator and mentor uh, for the Google Summer of Code pro program at MariaDB. It is also his first time at scale. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, oh, yeah. And, th and then there's me. Been around uh, for a while and have had the pleasure of working at all the um, server manufacturers. So, um, yeah. Next slide, please. So that's the one thing that I'll give you from uh, Oracle. So several years ago, at uh, Open World Keynote, Larry Allison came late to his own keynote, and then his clicker would not work, and then he would keep on saying things like, next slide, please. It's a wonderful video. You should go check it out on YouTube. 
Um, so just to you know, get things in perspective, MySQL has been around since May 1995. Anybody used it since then? 95, wow. Excellent. So Oracle actually acquired Innobase in October 2005. Innobase, makers of the InnoDB storage engine. It's the engine that probably all of you use. How many here don't use an engine that's InnoDB? Besides maybe Yoshi. <laughs> okay. Um, MySQL also did acquire Sun uh, for a billion dollars in January 2008. And um, Percona server's been around, the first ever branch, since uh, November of 2008. Um, Oracle then acquired Sun, um, and it took a very long time because there were fears that MySQL would be killed at Oracle. And the MariaDB server actually came around in uh, February of 2010. So, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so is MySQL tired? And that's what I have, uh, you know, as a question for the panelists, because Percona has also dabbled with MongoDB and most recently started offering Postgres. Um, Alibaba is making PolarDB. Um, Microsoft uh, decided to acquire a Postgres company, not a, a MySQL, a MariaDB company. Uh, MySQ, uh, MariaDB itself um, ca doesn't contribute, or more accurately, cannot contribute upstream any longer. And uh, this particular slide that some of you may see, uh, not on the video stream, is when in 2011, Michael Stonebreaker himself said, uh, you know, he famously said that Facebook is operating a huge complex MySQL implementation equivalent to a fate worse than death. And the only way to buy, way out of it is to bite the bullet and rewrite everything. So naturally, you know, Facebook doubled down on MySQL, made t-shirts and mocked him. So um, what, do you, what do you guys think? Is MySQL tired, Peter? Well, uh, I think uh, things have been different, right? So uh, when I was involved, started to be involved with MySQL, started with Corner back in 2006, uh, the MySQL was practically the only game in town, the only relational database uh, out there. It was kind of uh, Postgres, but that was much more niche database. And if you look at the companies founded at that, at that time, Facebook or Twitter, Yahoo, right? All their, their uh, MySQL. Now, uh, more than a decade later, we have uh, much more choices out there. There are many good relational databases, MySQL, uh, Postgres, uh, MariaDB, and also many different kinds of non-relational databases, even many kinds of databases, right? We have uh, graph databases, a database focus on, on the time series, uh, and many kinds of NoSQL databases, right? And I think while MySQL is not as uh, dominating that is before because there are many wonderful choices I think it is still going uh, going strong and I think those choices are wonderful for all of you and they're also wonderful for MySQL community because competition brings up best in developers and in companies Yoshi? Yeah, I, my, I think MySQL current state is better than I expected 10 years ago so 10, 10 years ago I worked, I worked at MySQL as a consultant the MySQL uh, uh, software, then lots of people said no SQL would, would take over as MySQL database, so MySQL had no future. Uh, Ten years ago, many people said that, but now MySQL is still everywhere. So even at Facebook, so there was a discussion that HBase was a superior database, so uh, let's deplicate MySQL and uh, put all engineering efforts to HBase. But actually, it's after a couple of years later that the opposite thing ha happened. So now the, f the largest database back on, and in Facebook uh, was, we migrated from our Facebook Messenger's HBase to MySQL called MyLogs. So actually it's a, uh, pretty interesting. So many people, what many people have predicted uh, didn't happen after 10 years. So more workloads for MySQL at Facebook. Yeah, actually. And, and, and what about from, from a cloud standpoint, Sunil? Um, that's what I, I was going to say as well. Um, I think uh, um, being such a such an old relational open source database, um, MySQL has uh, garnered an ecosystem that is second to none, um, and and people uh, only like uh, think about how do we replicate that. It's so pervasive, and then and and the char and the and the path that MySQL took early on, um, trying to be a kid, uh, pervasive like an embedded database, I think played out very very well for them, um, and then slowly graduating to more and more uh, B two C or business to consumer type of applications. So, um, and I believe the next, um, I think um, the the accelerant to MySQL has been the cloud, 
Uh, and it's in fact not just MySQL, it's been for all open source relational databases. Um, now, uh, make it, now being much more simpler and easier to, to use and then uh, compound that with other um, uh, cloud benefits uh, around security, performance, auto-tuning, and, and, and so on has kind of given a new life for these open source relational databases. And, and from our perspective, as we operate um, um, a very large cloud, um, um, we see MySQL being used in many different diverse, diverse type of applications and, and continues to be uh, one, of, uh, one of the favorite database engines. Uh, so um, from our perspective, we, we from our Microsoft and Azure in particular, we believe in giving our customers and developers the full uh, choice and flexibility um, and, and working in their terms. Uh, and, um, and towards that, uh, we see a huge opportunity around MySQL, and, and we are here to actually provide them the best uh, managed database on the Azure platform. And what's, what's the workload situation like at Alibaba Cloud, Jimmy? Uh, I think MySQL is the biggest uh, uh, RDS the provider of the database in uh, Alibaba Cloud. So we support tens of thousands of customers just on MySQL RDS. And it is one of the most uh, stable um, products uh, in our cloud. So uh, in terms of the uh, new features, every release it comes new features that uh, people like. So I, I think MySQL is still going very strong. Um, uh, on the cloud, and even if we develop any uh, variant of uh, MySQL, it still proves MySQL is one of the uh, uh, very stable, uh, one of the best uh, uh, open source database to start with uh, in the cloud. Thank you. So Vicente, you obviously work on MariaDB server. Is MySQL tired for you? Is MySQL what, sorry? Tired. Tired? <laughs> yes. Is no, it boring, so, old-fashioned? No, so I think we or is it give, wired? Um, I think we should recognize that Oracle has done a lot of work towards improving MySQL. However, um, it, it always uh, is on, in the back of my mind that um, is this development that Oracle is doing um, always uh, done because they want to develop the server, or is it done as a response to the competition that has formed around MySQL, and that is MariaDB. Um, one project that comes to mind is actually my project, which I did in 2013. That was uh, SQL standard roles. And MySQL has got this feature, but it's only now recently in uh, MySQL 8.0. So I think it's, um, it's important that other forks exist, because that puts, uh, creates a competitive ecosystem, and that people have to keep improving their products, um, both Oracle and MariaDB have to keep evolving to keep up with the requirements. So no, I don't think MySQL is tired, but um, I think it's important to keep it, um, to keep everybody on their toes by doing their, the right thing. Excellent, so it's kind of wired, but thanks to also the branches and forks then. So where is MariaDB used today, out of curiosity? Um, if anybody is running Linux, uh, I guess that if you are uh, installing MySQL, most major distributions are actually uh, defaulting to MariaDB. So uh, that's one of the big points that it shows that My MariaDB is used um, not just in uh, uh, simple websites, but also across large um, systems. Um, there's even the banking sector who's migrated, also the Wall Street is moving towards MariaDB, and uh, pretty much any large-scale website ends up using some form of MariaDB uh, behind the scenes. Any of the cloud vendors willing to share a, a big MySQL or MariaDB win? Um, so, I mean, on a, on a manager side, I mean, um, uh, of course, we've seen uh, very, very large wins um, across the board, um, like uh, especially running mission critical workload, like in the financial sector. Uh, uh, HSBC comes to mind uh, that are running um, uh, uh, thousands of transactions a second uh, and, and chose MySQL. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, you're free to go to uh, the, the Azure.com and look at the customer testimonials. So we have a wide, wide range of 
uh, use cases for MySQL in the financial industry, in the healthcare industry, um, and, and of course it is the default database of choice for WordPress, and, 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 and we all know that. Uh, but then we also see opportunities around, and we've seen uh, uh, good uh, big in, uh, installations uh, of MySQL in the context of Magento, um, and, and really when we see like where MySQL is used, and I, when, I, when, I, when you see these opportunities, right? So like Marketo, uh, big user of MySQL, Adobe, big user of MySQL. Of course, they're not, MySQL is not the only database they use. Um, they use MySQL, they use Postgres, they use multiple databases, and that's, and that's the world we live in right now. So it's not about in this customer, in this label, um, only MySQL is used, or only MariaDB is used, or only Postgres is used. In fact, we see all these databases being used for different applications and for different purposes. Um, and, that's, and that's where I think it's actually a goodness. Um, and, and now that the fact that the developers are, developers are really empowered to use whatever favorite databases they want to and feel comfortable with and, and, and deploy their applications. And, uh, and that choice and flexibility is what kind of uh, provides the, the total freedom um, and, and, and use the best database for the, for the right purpose. Fair enough. A any uh, from Azure? Yeah, uh, we also offer MariaDB in our RDS uh, offering. Um, another thing uh, to note is uh, uh, Alibaba also uh, invest uh, a lot of money uh, in Mar MariaDB Foundation. Uh, so I think uh, we agree that the competition uh, brings the uh, best of the um, uh, MySQL ecosystem. So we want to keep the uh, um, competition to be there. Speaking of um, foundations, uh, on this uh, stage we have uh, you know Alibaba, who has invested in the MariaDB Foundation and invested in the corporation as well. Actually, um, uh, Microsoft also a sponsor of the uh, foundation, and even Percona is a sponsor of the foundation. Um, is there uh, is there a reason why everyone is sponsoring the foundation? So uh, Alibaba's Alibaba is obviously looking at uh, the foundation as competition, but you've also put money into the company, so. Is there, is there a good reason there? Uh, basically, I, I think we want to also um, help MariaDB to uh, be able to develop its own feature that helps uh, the cloud, um, uh, the open source community. I think that's the one uh, big thing that uh, we want to make sure uh, we also contribute uh, financially also uh, in terms of open source community. That would be uh, good for the uh, whole, um, whole thing. Whole. Well, from, my, from Microsoft perspective, uh, we take a very principled approach um, to how we uh, look at open source. I mean, um, you can, of course, there are multiple different lenses that, can, that we can use. Um, and, and of course, we come across uh, some of the customers that will, that will say, um, I, I prefer MariaDB because I don't want my business uh, to do anything with Oracle. Um, and, and sometimes it kind of gets into kind of a religious conversation, but, but there are customers, I mean, uh, that, that, that say that and are genuinely concerned about it. Um, now, from the foundation perspective itself, it, it is for Microsoft to, to uh, put the money where the mouth is and, and, and look at uh, sustainability of, uh, of the open source uh, projects that we, um, that we decide to invest and go deep into. Um, and, and especially around the, uh, around the relation, open source relational databases, um, Postgres and MariaDB are the two uh, big bets that we have taken on in the context of um, how we enable and contribute with the community, partner with the community, um, and ensure that these communities thrive and, and are able to uh, sustain for the long haul. And that, 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 that's the spirit behind us investing in the MariaDB Foundation um, we've also started contributing code back to MariaDB. Um, it's not as easy to contribute code to Oracle uh, for MySQL. Um, and, and we also see this as a way for us to open channels and, and innovate in the open, uh, which, is, which is our uh, deepest desire and intent, and we've already started following through that. Um, this is also the same principle that we applied um, behind our acquisition in the Postgres space uh, with Citus Data. Um, with Citus as an extension, um, also having an open source uh, version of it, uh, and, we have, and having made a lot of contributions um, uh, to the base Postgres as well as 
uh, Citus as an extension. We we believe that was that that, that was complementary to the strategy that we are following uh, in terms of uh, making sure that we are deeply committed in the in the projects that we are uh, uh, highly investing in. Thank you, Sunil. So, Peter, why, why are you a, a re-entrant as a foundation sponsor? Well. Uh, some of you may not recognize uh, uh, it, but uh, besides uh, having our own software, Percona, uh, Percona server for MySQL and Percona server for MongoDB, uh, we also have a, uh, support a lot of customers on MariaDB or on uh, MySQL, uh, the MySQL server. And uh, it felt uh, right for us to make sure that we contribute to uh, in uh, to MariaDB ecosystem through a sponsoring foundation, addition to uh, the the code uh, what we do. Now, uh, having said that, uh, uh, I would say that I am uh, not super uh, thrilled with uh, uh, MariaDB uh, foundation uh, in terms of. Uh, I would love to see that being uh, more uh, focused on the larger needs of. Uh, uh, MariaDB community, right, and kind of being less uh, tied at the hip with uh, uh, with MariaDB uh, and MariaDB Corporation. And uh, for a long time, uh, this was the reason we did not support MariaDB Foundation because, in fact, that would be at large extent funding our com uh, competitor. But then, uh, in the end, we decided to still go ahead and uh, support uh, uh, MariaDB Foundation. Fair enough. So is Facebook ever going to support the MariaDB Foundation as well? Or? So the situation at Facebook is pretty different from other uh, yeah. companies. So we are not offering a software service. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, we are heavily using MySQL 5.6 right now and mm -hmm. are seeking to migrate to 8.0 in the future. So we heavily rely on the Oracle-based uh, MySQL. So that's the reason we are not uh, much considering about sponsoring foundation. But we are still having a relationship with MariaDB as specific employees. For example, there is a, a senior engineer called Sergei Petrunia, so who was the uh, first uh, big contributor to uh, MyRox, uh, which is a Rocksteady storage engine that is heavily used at Facebook. So, so we have relationship with MariaDB for that case-by-case -case basis. Fair enough. And we'll come back to MyRox in a bit. So we sent you, um, you know, who is the steward of MariaDB server? And since, you know, carrying on from Peter's discussion. Right, so I actually wanted to interrupt Peter and bring a comment, but um, so the... Let's argue. <laughs> yes, let's start doing that. That's why they're on the end, so they can't throw punches. <laughs> so the MariaDB Foundation is the steward for the MariaDB server. Uh, we, it, it is true that it is in a tricky position in that we share a trademark with the MariaDB Corporation. Um, but the thing is that the foundation is the nonprofit, and its its goal, as I can highlight in our annual report, I have lots of these and I can share it with you. <laughs> so our goals are adoption, collaboration, free public access, and to promote the development of the MariaDB server. And uh, I do ag agree with Peter that we should focus more on community, and which is why we are and I am actually in charge of the team who is going to be reviewing and encouraging more community contributions in the future. We are specifically hiring people to do that. Um, but um, just to show a, a quick uh, statistics of what happened before, compared to Oracle, we have four times as many pull requests accepted into the MariaDB server as opposed to how many pull requests Oracle accepted within MySQL. So we are co collaborating with uh, developers, with package maintainers, with distributions as a whole to make sure that the server is uh, working um, properly on not just the main uh, platforms and distributions, but also in the exotic world of, say, um, ARM, PowerPC, MIPS. I know ARM is not really that exotic, but it is not something that is people immediately think about. So all these are tasks that foundation takes care of. Uh, in, some, in some regards, we do need uh, outside developers to help. Uh, most notably, the corporation provides most of the 
development resources for the server, and that's fine. We don't want to be the main developer for the server. We want uh, outside entities to come and build the best server they can be. So the foundation is the steward, but uh, and is working on becoming better. Um, do you think this is a, a good model going forward, steward-wise? Well, uh, I just want to make a point, right? Where uh, my concern is, right? I think what Vicente just mentioned is what MariaDB Foundation is focused on MariaDB server, but the server is only one component. Same as Linux kernel is not is important, but not the only one component of uh, your Linux distribution, right? And uh, the fact what uh, uh, MariaDB Foundation yields all that other stuff to take care of MariaDB Corporation, right? Which often would uh, provide non-open source tools for that. I think that is uh, a really very uh, a bad scope for a mission, right? So, for example, you would see what uh, in the MySQL and MariaDB world, uh, right? Uh, people are standardizing for on the proxy SQL to use for uh, their uh, the, the traffic management, right? And and it's not uh, just us. You would find, for example, a lot of even Oracle blog post accepting what that is a very uh, good uh, alternative, right? But I am not seeing what uh, MariaDB embraces foundation, MariaDB foundation embracing that. And why don't we do that? Well, of course, because there is a BS license max scale which MariaDB corporation produces, right? And I believe that as the time goes, we'll have more and more and those tensions created because guess what? MariaDB corporation is venture funded company which accepted by this time, how much? Is it 100 million bucks? Just under 100 million. Just under 100 million bucks, right? And those guys, while they may slightly care about open source, they care most and foremost about returns, right? And what that means is what MariaDB Corporation will naturally pursue whatever strategy which will uh, we'll have to do, right, to provide returns for those investments, right? And that is why I do expect what there will be uh, will be more tensions uh, between the open source MariaDB goals and the commercial goals of uh, MariaDB Corporation. So some of you may be may have been at you know Stephen Wally's talk yesterday, and he said parking your identity brand on any open source project you own instead of the product solution your customers buy creates confusion for your messaging to customers. And the famous example around this is, of course, how Red Hat managed to have Red Hat Enterprise Linux and, and Fedora. And Vicente has already mentioned that you know, with MariaDB, it's shared. And Peter's also talked about the fact that the corporation is, is heavily venture-backed. And um, so, they're, they're, so likely, generally, two stewards. Now, you know, Oracle is the steward of MySQL. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, they actually made promises to acquire MySQL. They made um, 10 promises. Next slide, please. And of course, they removed it from the internet, so it's only on archive.org. And, um, and uh, to be fair, they made five-year commitments, and now it's been uh, more than 10 years. And um, do you think Oracle, um, you know, has, has Oracle killed MySQL, or you know, have they stuck by their commitments, and are they doing a good job? Yoshi. <laughs> Yeah, I think they are good. So if they re <laughs> hide the duplicate uh, storage engine APIs, uh, we get screwed. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm pretty sure that Oracle won't do that. So, uh, I think Oracle is doing pretty good so far. St still, lots of engineers like in the AV or replication teams that continuing to working at Oracle, so which is a good sign to to me at least. Jimmy, you are also part of the InnoDB team. Is Oracle a good steward of MySQL? Uh, in general, yes. Uh, I worked for uh, Oracle for um, in the MySQL. I was in the InnoDB team before they acquired the uh, MySQL team. So uh, it has been like nine years. I uh, just left the Oracle last uh, September. So uh, in general, I, I think they did a, a pretty good job. Uh, at least uh, leave MySQL alone. Uh, not saying that really uh, sponsoring, um, uh, but at least I leave uh, MySQL alone, and uh, it's developing and uh, thriving. So um, it has one of the uh, biggest, biggest uh, MySQL in ODB, like uh, 
I think, in the world. So they are still getting out a lot of good features uh, that keep uh, the mainstream uh, still uh, very attractive. So everyone wants to move to MySQL 8. Um, that's uh, the latest uh, uh, release. So I think they, it shows they're still doing a pretty good job. Are you seeing a similar interest uh, with uh, as your MySQL? Uh, I mean, the way I would answer that question is I think if you look at from a business commercial interest standpoint, I think Oracle has done a phenomenal job. Um, and, and it still garners a lot of revenue um, for not just Oracle, but the entire ecosystem as well. Um, so I think that has really thrived. But um, if, if, if I have to be critical, I would say um, around the fact that uh, were they able to upheld the open sourceness uh, or, or preserve the, the roots of how and why the reason behind why MySQL became the, 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 the database it is, then that, that's perhaps uh, they have not paid much attention to. So, um, so I think I'll draw the similar kind of parallels like to, Peter's, to add to Peter's point around the MariaDB as well uh, on, on the, on the, between the foundation and the corp. Um, I think uh, there, there, there is opportunity there, I believe. Uh, there's, there's huge potential and opportunity uh, for MariaDB. Um, and in fact, another d FUBAR database that might come out as well. I mean, the, the, the database is never going to die. I mean, it, there's going to be tons and tons of use cases and opportunities for hundreds of databases. Um, but, but important is, to, is, is staying focused. Um, and, and, and I would l really like to see MariaDB come out of the shadows of uh, Oracle and MySQL, uh, build their own identity. Um, and, and, and also, um, uh, I think this is for the community at large, uh, once you have a mission, once you have a vision, uh, people align to it, right? Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I see a lack of that alignment, um, but there is potential, there's huge opportunity. Uh, and, I, and I truly hope and wish that uh, MariaDB will, will um, capture that opportunity and create their own identity, uh, which will create a new ecosystem, which will create a new coalition of uh, enthusiasts uh, trying to, and building support for that. And, and, and um, with our investment behind MariaDB, we believe that uh, we, can, we can hope to achieve that. Fair enough. What do you think, Peter? Uh, have Oracle been good stewards? Well, <laughs> from technical standpoint, I like Larry's MySQL a lot more than I like Monty's MySQL. Oh. And I've been uh, out there during uh, uh, MySQL 5.0 times, right? And uh, this was, I would say, entirely, uh, you know, filled with uh, checkbox features, right? You would have uh, things like views or store procedures or subqueries designed, which uh, would not uh, work well together or work well at all, right? To a point, for example, what Google in one of the later releases would have to disable subqueries on a partial level, if you remember that, because they were so bad and they couldn't teach their developers uh, when exactly they are, uh, are useful, right? Now, uh, I think if you look at the uh, Oracle, they have been doing a lot of solid engineering, right? And some features have been taking its time to come, but uh, they uh, generally come uh, is uh, quite solid, well documented, well uh, I integrated. Now speaking about the uh, other side, or Oracle of course is, uh, is Oracle and they pursue their uh, open core model for MySQL, so not everything is open source, there is a, a commercial version, but they have been actually quite nice about that. Where they have implemented as a closed source, which is done through, uh, through plugins with uh, public APIs. And uh, we at Percona implemented our own open source versions for majority of them. We could do it both uh, from technical standpoint and they did not make it hard. And we could also make it from, uh, uh, from legal standpoint, right? Not uh, getting into the, any uh, you know, legal trouble, trouble with, uh, with Oracle. So, I think what uh, Oracle have been pursuing their own business interests with uh, MySQL Enterprise, but they have uh, allowed the other companies to implement the open source alternatives, which uh, if they choose so, which we did. 
So speaking of disabled MySQL features, um, you know, at Facebook you have your own MySQL tree. Do you also disable features so that your developers can't shoot themselves in the foot? So we heavily rely on the storage engine API. So we call the new storage engine called MyLogs. And we also rely on the like, audit plugin. So we have a custom audit plugin that are sending the MySQL query logs to internal uh, queue service called Scribe. So it uses a uh, audit plugin. So we have we heavily rely on the plugin development by Oracle. And the MySQL 8.0 pushes further about plugin or component architectures like a MySQL application, like the same thing. So we, uh, I think this is a very good trend. I, I hope Oracle continues that. Fair enough. So you know, we sent you, I guess, um, uh, quality features uh, are important so that people also don't disable features. Is this a focus of the of MariaDB server, like fully documented, full-on quality features? So um, we should um, uh, be fair and say that we still need to work on our documentation. There's things we can improve there. And we are focusing on fixing that. Um, one thing that um, MariaDB really focuses on is ensuring that um, your, your server, which can be from uh, uh, version 5.3, all the way to 10.3, um, it will always work. You can, you can always upgrade from an old version to a new version. So we care that your application will keep on working even if you were using an, an older server and then migrated to a newer one. Um, this is something that um, makes it difficult to do quality features um, in, in an efficient manner. So we have to make, make sure we maintain backwards compatibility all the time. Uh, this um, slows us down, but I, we believe this is important because users should not be um, worried of upgrading. And uh, I can make a statement that uh, MySQL 10.3, um, sorry, uh, MariaDB 10.3 is more compatible to MySQL 5.7 than MySQL 8.0 is compatible to MySQL 5.7 when it comes to upgrades. So, bold statement. And I th there are um, pages that can prove that this is so. Fair enough. So you know, cloud vendors uh, famously love to disable features of servers. So uh, are you disabling less features on uh, MySQL, or are you disabling f less features on MariaDB? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so. It's not about disabling features or, 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 or not taking the features um, uh, and putting it in the hands of the customer and the users. Um, as a managed database service, uh, we, have, we have to package it in a way that, uh, that is reliable um, and, and not that just works 80% of the time. We have to design it such that it works 100% of the time. Um, and, and in, and in ability for us to deliver on that promise, uh, we have to take some, uh, some of the capabilities out of the hands of users. Uh, because not all users are created equal. Um, and and, and uh, so there are some users um, who, who can really um, hurt uh, and bring their databases down. And, and, and in which case, uh, um, we as a managed database service are kind of the liable uh, for some of those actions. So we take those very uh, seriously, and there's a reason why we, it's not that we think about it as taking features or, 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 or pulling features away from the users, but enable and, and, and enable as much as we can pro provide the guarantees uh, that we are liable for, uh, for the user that this database is going to be up and running all the time, 24 by 7 by 365. So fair enough. Not quite saying which one's got more disabled uh, functionality. What, what about on the Alibaba side? Uh, I, I think uh, similar to what uh, Sonia just said, we are basically manager the uh, database for the user. And a large part of the uh, cloud service uh, for the database we spend on is on the control system, which we provide uh, monitoring and the control. and. Uh, uh, but we cannot release all the uh, config variables such like, to all the users. So something we manage by ourselves. And that take a lot of uh, um, 
just like uh, Sonia said, uh, we, they cannot shoot themselves, right? So they can, uh, it's made easier for them to use. That's the big, basically the thing. Uh, we also provide as many features as we can to the user. Uh, so that's uh, mostly um, the, the thing that we try to provide uh, as many as we can. But in terms of some dangerous, very tricky uh, configure options, we we'll probably will handle ourselves or even shield from the user. Okay, so, uh, next slide, please. So, now some spicy stuff. Um, just last week, uh, Michael Howard, the CEO of MariaDB Corporation, said that many cloud vendors, he wouldn't name them, but you will know whom, apparently, are strip mining open source technologies and companies and abusing the license and privilege and not giving back to the community. And of course, he also believes that proprietary and closed licenses are dead. You've got to be a general purpose database. Now, what do you think about this, um, Peter? Well, uh I will start by saying that it was interesting to see the person talking about open source license dead and then having Clockstrix DB, which, as I understand, is commercial license. And uh, uh, as I hear, there is no plan to take it open source, right? Or uh, MariaDB Corporation have a uh, history of taking the open source things, which was first with max scale and then taking that to the non open source license, right? So on. On that fact, I think that uh, makes a very good and co quotable statement, uh, but uh, I don't think that has uh, the truth behind that when it sends to uh, uh, in this case. Now, in terms of a strip mining uh, open source, right, and this general concern about the cloud vendor, I think what is very interesting is you hear those concerns from a lot of venture funded companies, right? And I think what is interesting in this case, it looks like the people uh, went ahead and embraced the open source license because of adoption, right? And one of the reasons that adoption because, uh, with open source is because that doesn't provide their possibility only for one vendor to make the money on the software, right? Allows that to do everybody else. But then as the time comes and as a, some strong competitor, as a cloud vendor arises, they claim, oh, that's not fair. We have to be making sure what we are making uh, all the money from, uh, from the software. Well, in this case, you guys should have uh, probably not go on the open source route, right? Or choose the different license, right? For your software, which would have uh, prevented cloud vendors from uh, doing so, right? So I think in this case, as uh, the open source software works uh, as, uh, uh, as expected, right? And uh, that is the privilege open source license for, uh, uh, gives cloud vendors which we, uh, uh, which we use it. Now, another interesting thing in this case is if you don't ask their, those companies, but if you ask the end users, right, what do you think about that? And then here you'll find the opposite I think. You will find what a lot of cloud vendors made open source databases much more accessible and ever to use than, uh, than, uh, than ever before, right? And especially I think the rise of Postgres those days is a lot because of the cloud vendors because uh, uh, PostgreSQL often was hard to manage for beginners and then Heroku and later database as a service and many major cloud vendors make it not a problem at all, right? Not an issue. So I think uh, in this case, there is a lot of benefit, even our unnamed cloud vendor uh, uh, provides as a value to the uh, open source ecosystem, which is just not in the sense of code at this point. Would I like them to contribute more code? Yes, of course, uh, uh, I would, right? But I don't think what we have, you know, some uh, abomination here. So, so J Jimmy, you, you represent a cloud vendor. Do you think you're strip mining open source? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, um, I, I don't agree. So basically, if you look at the uh, uh, cloud uh, vendor, when we put a database on the market, uh, a lot of portion of the work is now really of database itself. A lot of them are the hardware, a lot of them are the uh, uh, control system, 
how to make it easier for users to use. So in terms of the cloud, actually it promotes uh, the open source, the MySQL, to a lot of customers that can, don't know how to use them. Now they make it easier for them to use that. Uh, even for those uh, small customers, most of the uh, 95 percent of us are small, medium customers. They even they build themselves. They probably hire somebody and download the uh, open source and do this work. But for us, uh, we just make it easier for them to do that. And a lot of investment is just not on the database itself. Uh, it's on the uh, control system, uh, the interface, and also the hardware. So I think in a sense, uh, the cloud actually make, uh, promotes the uh, open source. Um, it doesn't really uh, you know, uh, try to strip the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the revenues from the open source company. Fair enough. Well, what about you, Sun? What do you think about this? Um, I mean, like I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in, in Microsoft, we've taken a principled approach. Um, and we believe um, actions speak louder than words, um, and 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 the the acquisition of Citus on the on the on the Postgres side um, actually echoes our deepest intent and and and, and uh, uh, continuing the open source and contributing it back contributing back to the open source. We are already contributing to MariaDB, um, um, uh, of course, in small quantities. Uh, but here, strip mining. I mean, I don't want to associate with quantity. Even if you contribute one line of code, it's one line of code. Uh, right. It's it's it's, co it's a contribution. So um, we are already walking the talk, uh, and um, and I do worry about. Uh, uh, Strip mining in the in the in the in the in the harshest sense, uh, um, and it is. Um, I, be, I understand that there is always going to be some commercial interest and some technology that you build as extension that you want to keep uh, closed source. But I also believe uh, it is fundamental for the for the sustain and the, for the sustainment of the of the open source projects that uh, that vendors contribute, uh, and and the contribution. Can come in multiple flavors. Um, it should not just be measured on a single yardstick of how many lines of code, um, and 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 really like that's how the community operates. And different companies and different users bring different strengths to the table. And as a whole, we create an ecosystem. Uh, so I would also like to see, well, like uh, as as much as uh, these comments do make airwaves uh, and grab headlines. Uh, that that we really see this as more holistic, um, and and not just kind of create our own yardstick and then hold uphold somebody else on that yardstick and say hey they are doing this or they are doing that and and I think yeah. this is this is where partnership collaborative um, uh, engagement is is very important um, to the overall like the, the the growth and the funneling of this uh, of these things. Yeah. Well, so, Sorry, I, ju I just want to add one thing that uh, even during like recent we our porting like of MySQL 8, we like a file like a six seven bucks uh, in a month to the upstream. So um, that's like a one way for us to really test out the uh, uh, open source uh, data, so other user can benefit. So that's something that we have the resource to uh, really try out the new things and all, both in the uh, performance or the code stability side. So that's one thing that uh, we can also contribute, making the open source much better. So Vicente, do you, do you prefer code or cache? <laughs> so before I answer that, <laughs> gives me a, a bit more time to think. So uh, I really want to support Sunil and Jimmy, um, and also um, uh, Facebook, Yoshinori. Um, we've gotten significant contributions both from Microsoft, from Alibaba, and we certainly couldn't have uh, gotten MyRox into MariaDB without their help. So this proves that uh, large companies can and do contribute to open source. And there are players that are obviously on the other end of the scale, uh, but there are companies that are not just strip mining open source. And so now, yeah, go ahead. And, and now to answer the other question, if I prefer code or cash, why not, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> so I suspect, largely, 
it's a, a situation where a foundation likes both code and cash, but a corporation probably wants more cash. And some will even go up to Facebook and say, look, if you've made so many hundred millions this particular quarter, a certain percentage should be going to, to us since you know, you're running in this very large database. Do you, do you get vendors coming to you and saying that, y Yoshi? So, uh, we, uh, but, uh, so we operate mask in production, so we care much about the reliability and the efficiency. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, if, the mask, uh, if the database fails 10% more often, then our production engineers get so burnt out, so which is very problematic for us. And also, if we can save the number of servers uh, by 10%, that's a huge cost win for us. So that's why we care so much about uh, reliability and uh, efficiency, which is, might be uh, quite different from uh, many small companies. Yeah. Fair enough. So um, we, we've got approximately less than 10 minutes left, and I'd like to open up to uh, questions in a while. So uh, in, in, the, in the meantime, we'll have uh, 30 seconds uh, per panelist to tell us something interesting about you know, what, you're, what you're up to. So Yoshi, you know, tell us in 30 seconds what Myrox is and why it's important. Okay, so the Myrox is a, a MySQL new storage engine based on the RocksDB. So RocksDB is a key value store based on not the B3, but on the log structured merge uh, trees, which is similar to uh, Cassandra or HBase. So we created Myrox just for saving space, uh, to, which it means saving uh, the number of servers. So we, we uh, migrated from InnoDB to Myrox. Uh, on the facebook.com, the main Facebook database, and we migrated from a Facebook Messenger from HBase to Myrox, so which eventually uh, saved the number of servers by half compared to InnoDB, and we improved reliability quite a lot on the messengers. So it's mostly for saving space and improving reliability. So there's a good chance you all interacted with Myrox today, yesterday, okay. and so forth. What, what about from a Percona standpoint? Can we get Myrox in Percona server? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, Myrox uh, is uh, available in the Percona server, and if you want uh, uh, MySQL compatibility plus uh, Myrox, uh, that truly is a way to go. And as uh, uh, Yosha said, if you want to s stop wasting money, then you should try Myrox. What's unique in uh, Microsoft's offering of MySQL and MariaDB? Um, I mean, um, so first of all, on, on, on the managed database uh, side, uh, we are building on top of the community additions, and, and we do that uh, deliberately. We do that in, in, in purpose uh, from, a, from, a, from our user standpoint that, that uh, uh, prevents them lock-in, um, and, and, and which is what I mentioned before, that we want to serve our customers on their terms and not, and not get them locked into the, into the platform. And once they come, uh, we, we provide them the most unique value in terms of uh, built-in high availability without having to uh, set up replicas. We are the only cloud that does that, and which means you can set up a highly my available MySQL or MariaDB database and spend half the cost, even when if you're running on hosting or on a virtual machine. That, and then providing the enterprise security and enterprise performance. Uh, we are working on uh, building uh, and making performance optimization uh, easy and simple. Um, and uh, and, and we, we call it intelligent performance, and it's really about providing users with intelligent insights, recommendations, auto-tuning, so that they can spend more and more time uh, developing and writing apps as opposed to managing and optimizing databases. Thank you, Sunil. So Alibaba is famous for also offering MariaDB TX, the enterprise product. Also does offer MaxScale in the cloud, which used to be uh, GPL and now business source license. And you're also developing PolarDB. So I'll give, you, I'll give you one minute to tell us why you've gone the enterprise route and tell us more about PolarDB. That's too much favoritism. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, we actually use MaxScale uh, in for our uh, PolarDB as well, RDS. Uh, uh, basically, that's uh, used by, uh, uh, supplied by MariaDB. And that use, uh, it's doing pretty well. Uh, for the PolarDB side, uh, PolarDB is uh, a unique cloud database based on the MySQL, and it does the uh, physical replication and also separately uh, compute, uh, compute the node uh, from the storage node. So you can scale the computer node or you can scale the cloud node. 
So that's like a similar to uh, Amazon Aurora, but it's different uh, in the design. But it's uh, our new generation uh, database uh, that uh, it's growing very fast for us. And we sent you why MariaDB in, in 30 seconds. Like, what's new? So um, you should choose MariaDB because <laughs> it's guaranteed to be the server that will always be open source. There is the MariaDB Foundation, which guarantees that, being a non-profit organization. And um, if you do want to contribute something to MariaDB, or you want to make sure that something gets fixed, um, making sure your voice is heard, either via a pull request or by commenting on our mailing lists, our knowledge base, you are guaranteed to get an answer from us. You are not just talking to a brick wall. See, I suspect that uh, MySQL, as we all talked about, is probably still going to remain open source. And you know, Facebook, for example, is a big user of 5.6 and uh, on the path to migration to 8.0. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about why you're still sticking to MySQL and not MariaDB, and what's the path look like for you? So uh, we, we are using MySQL uh, because uh, we, personally, I want uh, Oracle to continue to support MySQL. So we want to support uh, Oracle as well, uh, but we also have a good relationship with MariaDB. But, uh, and also to, from technical perspective, so we like, we are, uh, like MySQL uh, GTID, so and GTID format is different from a MySQL and a MariaDB, so which is, makes migration really hard. So. Fair enough. So um, migration is hard, and you stuck with MySQL GTID. Now, why did MariaDB switch to another form of GTID? And uh, you know, can, can people move between both databases? Uh, I'm not going to answer that question fully. Uh, just that the GTID implementation for MariaDB was a decision based on sound technical principles. Uh, we did not try to be incompatible with MySQL on purpose. Uh, if I remember correctly, our GTA implementation was the first one that became stable compared to MySQL's, which was uh, a bit later. It, that's true. It became stable for, at first in a Percona server release and then might have shif shifted, right? Oh, that was group, group commit. Um, so, you know, I'm surprised you didn't mention uh, one of the key features, which is um, SQL mode equals Oracle. So, you know, are you seeing mass defections of Oracle to MariaDB server now? So it is true that um, a few large customers uh, from, from the MariaDB Corporation have migrated to Oracle. I don't have access to more um, users to know if they have. Uh, but just seeing a few, it's probably that a lot more are following. And seeing their example, quite a few people are moving to, uh, from Oracle to MariaDB. Um, I think the number, um, the main reason why they switch is that Cost-wise, it's potentially 100 times cheaper to run MariaDB than to run Oracle. Fair enough. Um, you know, are you seeing such defections, Peter, at Percona? Well, uh, uh, yes, but uh, mainly to Postgres. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, what uh, if you look at from the target open source database uh, for migration for Oracle, is uh, Postgres is very far ahead from. Uh, MySQL and, uh, uh, and MariaDB combined, right? If at least uh, 10x more uh, folks who are looking to move to Postgres than to MySQL and MariaDB. So, um, you know, as a last question um, for all the panelists, you know, it's, if you're going to start on MySQL today, um, and I looked, the manual is 6,028 pages long. What, what advice would you give to someone starting with MySQL today? What's, what's the quickest advice you can give to someone, Peter? Learn, explain. Learn, explain. <laughs> OK, Yoshi. Is that the high performance my scared? <laughs> so no. And CC equals support? Uh, we, al oh, we also have a lot of uh, wiki uh, blog on uh, MySQL, so uh, we can share that. OK, we sent you. Start using it. If you run into troubles, start asking for help. OK, so I, I guess we don't have time for questions. Or do we? OK, we have time for at least a question. OK, please. Uh, my, question is, my question is on Microsoft. How do you balance SQL Server and MySQL and MariaDB contribution? How do you uh, repeat the question? 
Okay, so the, the question was, how does Microsoft balances between its own uh, proprietary interest with SQL Server and other, all the other open source databases? Um, I mean, we have, we, I, I believe we have done, uh, like, we are doing a phenomenal job there. Um, and, and that comes with the realization, first, that um, uh, Microsoft is building and continues to build a relational database platform. Um, and, and the platform which supports multiple database engines. Um, and, and, and in other words, we are not selling a database religion to the user. Our user comes in to us saying, I have these database needs, I want to use MySQL, I want to use SQL, or I want to use Postgres or anybody, or MariaDB, and we provide them the platform on which they can be successful. Um, so we want to contribute in all, across all, and there's absolutely zero conflict of interest, uh, if you will. Uh, in terms of contributing one versus the other. There is no uh, favoritism on contributing more here or contributing more there um, because regardless of the database uh, the engines that the user has chosen, we want to be the best platform for them. Okay, and we have one more question. Uh, I had a question, which is maybe a follow-up on the, uh, the cloud vendors having to uh, turn off services. Is there more work that needs to be done, like with, I guess, with respect to multi-tenancy? Are there other changes that, so when you're, you're dealing, I guess, in a cloud offering, which might not have been the additional uh, kind of design, what might not have been conceived at the time, um, are, are there more things that could be made where then you could turn on the features and, I guess, charge for them and not lose the whole system? So, so it's, got less, it's got less to do with charging more or charging less. It's, it's, it's really... Uh, the, the, the biggest friction uh, of a managed service uh, that we are unable to provide con uh, is, is control on the customization as it relates to the parameter tuning. Uh, you, you, you could, for example, you could, you could tune parameter one way that maximizes the performance, but then c c completely doesn't take into account the durability. Or you could create tables uh, like MySAM, as like a classic example, without, uh, and, and then lose the table and then lose the data. Um, and it's these type of uh, fundamental capable features uh, that we don't give access or control back to the user. Otherwise, from a SQL programming surface area and the language functions, et cetera, they're all fully supported. Like, you, you have the 100% programming surface area that you would use, like, on-premises, on your desktop, laptop, anywhere. Another question? Hi. The main reason we change it for... Uh, from MySQL to Postgres was because of the GIS, and I haven't seen you guys mention anything about it, so I'd like to know what is coming ahead for all of you guys. Well, I would say what uh, G, uh, uh, GIS uh, was uh, very substantially improved in, uh, in MySQL X. I think there is like at least a 10x difference between 5.7 mm -hmm. and that 8, is. so uh, you can give it another look if you are interested in this space. And MariaDB has had GIS for quite some time as well, possibly even before um, MySQL did. Um, yes, I'm not really that familiar with the GIS system. Yeah, so it's been around since 5.3 and uh, got improved further. As MySQL implemented GIS functionality, MariaDB also then uh, follows on. So this, uh, this push actually goes both ways, right? So to make it more compatible, like GeoJSON and stuff has come into MariaDB as well. So we do have a dedicated developer working just on GIS and improving it. So um, we do care about it. Uh, I guess one last question from the Internet. Uh, it seems like data stores as of late have uh, an increasing trend of changing their licenses to things that are less than, uh, to other, to other non-OSI licenses. Yep. Uh, is there something that, is, is there, is there, is, is there something that, uh, uh, makes that specific that makes databases specifically a, a target for this. I mean, we, there's folks on stage that have done this as well with some of their product. Um, and is there is there some other way that we should be looking to make this uh, a more sustainable space other than than playing with the licensing? Yeah, so my personal opinion on licensing is that it's usually VC backed companies that play with it. And um, after MySQL got sold for a billion dollars, it turns out lots of VCs funded databases. Right? There are probably like you know a hundred odd databases that have been funded. Uh, not all are going to survive. I mean, many have passed away recently as well. And um, it's, it's a way to, you know, drive revenue. Uh, it, the good news is uh, just this weekend at scale, uh, MongoDB actually withdrew the SSPL um, license from being, uh, trying to be approved at the OSI. 
which is interesting. So they're actually not going to be a proprietary database, which maybe makes it fairly interesting for, for even you, Peter, because you, you actually make a MongoDB product. Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I would say that is a very uh, unfortunate uh, choice uh, for for MongoDB, uh, right? Uh, if we would be at this choice uh, now, we would not uh, have added to uh, MongoDB portfolio. But now we always have a lot of uh, customers, and we made commitments uh, to them, uh, and uh, that means we'll continue to develop your corner server for MongoDB. And uh, as a SPL license, uh, uh, even though it is uh, not open source, but uh, we don't have uh, uh, any choice. At the same time, what we are uh, looking for uh, is uh, the good uh, open source uh, and uh, not open source uh, alternatives for uh, MongoDB users, because again, the competition makes things better. I'm very glad to see, for example, uh, there is uh, uh, Amazon now has a document DB uh, has a compatibility, uh, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I am very glad uh, uh, Microsoft has a Cosmos DB, MongoDB compatibility, even though those solutions are not open source. I am even more excited we have a foundation DB document layer, uh, right, which is 100% uh, uh, open source. It's not 100% compatible, yes, with MongoDB, but I believe if those variety, right, we will uh, uh, see uh, uh, see more alternatives, truly open source of alternatives for MongoDB merge. And uh, Alibaba, of course, famously also has a MongoDB service. <laughs> to be uh, fair, yeah, uh, I think we was kind of worried about the uh, we are, uh, pay very attention to the uh, this license issue, and that also. I think one of the reasons a lot of people are using uh, Postgres also is uh, because the license issue has so. Uh, I guess this, um, unfortunately, is some kind of uh, issue that we all pay very attention to, very much attention to. Yeah. Yeah. And I suspect the, the good news here is that MySQL and MariaDB server are GPL v2 licensed, and it's fairly strong with lots of external contributors. Getting them to you know, relicense code would be a lot harder, so I think you know, MySQL is going to be GPL v2 for the long haul, as is MariaDB server. All right, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, all, all panelists. <laughs> thank you.